Dear viewers, you are welcome back to yet another se uh, section in this our interactions. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you for bringing us back again to continue in our from our last section. Pray that will your spirit will have your way in all that we do Amen. and in all that will be done here. Amen. And let it bless your children in different parts of the world. Amen. The mighty name of the eternal. Amen. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So, um, I don't know, this time we've come back again to continue our section. I'm still here with our people that we introduced in the last episode. I think we have some series to take, take uh, here because of uh, the time we are cutting them into some sections. But this time around, I can see the microphone with Honorable Nora Kinsley. So, okay, over to you, Honorable. Daddy, thank you so much for this privilege. The question I have here this evening is for someone, Adele, and I know she'll be very happy that her question is being answered. Last week, I went to my shop to check on my sales girl. So when I got there, this lady came, although she's my customer. She now said she had been looking for me that she wants to see me. And I said, what is it? She said she keep on dreaming, seeing herself giving birth to children. That the dream keep on repeating itself, more, not once, more than five times. That even when she prayed, the drink sick people repeating himself. So she now went to meet her church pastor. She now narrated the, the dream to the pastor. Her church pastor now told her that her, that she's possessed, so not just possessed alone, she has a spiritual husband and she also has spiritual children. And for her to be free from this, she has to do fasting, and she has to pray and fast to kill those spiritual children. If not, our physical children here or else will die. She was like, she said she's not too comfortable with what her pastor just told her. And she feel like discussing with someone and she knew that I have a big daddy by my side. So she wants, she narrated everything. I should help her to tell to my daddy. And also told her that if I'm you, I will not go for that program. I believe that giving belt is a good thing. Giving birth is a blessing, but I don't know how she will take it. But daddy, I know some people will still be out there. They will still benefit one or two things. So I want you to throw more light on it, sir. Thank you. Thank you also, Honorable Nora Kinsley. Um, I do not intend at all to interfere in any revelation of anybody as well as the interpretation given to any revelation or dream by anybody. As you all know, I don't intend to step on the bounds, or I mean cross the bounds of any organized religion in, uh, as far as their doctrines and settings are concerned. But in divine focus, I can speak in general terms. And let me make this clear. Generally speaking, for a woman to give birth in a revelation, in the dream, in any related subjective encounter, is a physical um, symbolism. It's a symbolism physically representing that the woman is a career of blessing. Mm. When, if a woman is a career of blessing in this material world, she will often see herself giving birth. Giving birth in the dream is not a, a bad woman. It's not a bad uh, this, you see. Sometimes our people will tell us too that when you see yourself bathing in the river, that it means you are interacting with evil spirits. And I've said that they should stop those kind of interpretations. Because no religion, including Christianity, or no man of God, should, should insist that it is only the evil spirits that have dominion in the water. Even from the beginning, it was not so. The scripture made it clear that in the beginning, the spirit of the Lord, is said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. It was that spirit of the Lord that moved upon the face of the waters that brought about manifestations when it was a light. So those are the, those are the, that is the spirit of light. I am not saying that the, 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 the personalities that were cast away, you know, 
from the network of Nakash that they did not go into the water aspect. They, they inhabited mountains and deserts and uh, forests and waters. But that does not also mean that all the mountains and deserts and forests, that they are under the control of, of this, you see, Nakash, the, the old serpent. This is not, it's not true. Even the Bible, in the book of Revelation, Bible scholars are aware that, that when the, one of the this, uh, instrument of punishment was poured upon the, uh, the, 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 the seat of the beast or something, that uh, the angel of the water glorify the Lord. That angel of the water you read in the book of Revelation is an angel of light. So bathing in the river uh, is not a bad sign. It's even a sign of wealth. Swimming, especially if your head is up, is a good sign. Uh, so many things. So giving birth, if a woman is if a woman is pregnant in the dream and she 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 now had still bad. That woman is a career of blessing. But there are forces fighting against that blessing. The forces fighting against the blessing, if, if a revelation comes to her to reveal that, it will come in form of giving, uh, having still bad, as giving birth to a dead, you see. So she has to pray. But a woman giving birth in the dream, I tell you, it means that the woman is a career of blessing because in, in, in the dream symbolism, in the spiritual aspect, eh? you know, when a woman is giving birth, eh? then uh, as the process, a human being comes out. So that giving birth in the dream eh? now means material blessing because she's a symbol of material blessing. That material blessing comes out. If that woman you're talking about can watch her life and the life of her husband, if she's married or things of people around her, she will see that from the point she had that dream, eh? 90 days will not pass. Eh? And she will see evidence of good, good things happening around them in material terms. This is natural. This has nothing to do with religion now. That's what a dream can, anybody can have that dream, whether it's a Christian, a Muslim, or even any woman who doesn't go to any religion, because that is uh, the, the makeup. But if you say that the pastor say that if she does not undergo uh, this, that the children will die. Eh? Okay, my ear has heard that now. Tell her that I say it. Mm -hmm. That her children will not die. Amen. You hear me? Because yes, yes. because because my ear has heard, mm -hmm. and my and, and, and my mouth must counter it. Amen. And so her children will not die. Amen. But if she becomes afraid that her children will die, eh, the, the fear itself will form the energy to produce the death. Not because of the dream, mm -hmm. but because of the fear. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes, okay. So you said your friend want to uh, hear us speak, and she has. We make sure that uh, this message is sent to her whenever they upload, upload it. God bless you all. Yes, any other uh, comment? Does anybody have anything to say? Yeah. You mentioned the issue of uh, okay, okay. Uh, fear in this instance, that yes. it can lead to it. And you know, that is sometimes you speak and you say there is more that meets the eye. I want a little bit more of the more that meets the eye, the area <laughs> of this fear and how it can aid manifestation of things, occurrences like this, or become occurrences like this. Yeah, because man, the existence is of man is premised upon the um, concentration of energy. You see, man, first of all, is an energy essence compressed in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the gross material platform. Man thinks that he is the body, and that without the body, he will not know himself, but it's a lie. In, in the course of your having dreams or experiences, I don't know whether of you have had the experience in which you know yourself as yourself, but you cannot recognize the form in which you are. Huh? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so now the form is just a symbol of communication. This is your form. We are these forms we have their symbols. In reality, we are energy. And if we are going to the more details, more advanced details, the man is the energy of the sun compressed in the, in the gross material matter. That is the truth. But let us not go into that because it may go outside the certain, this, you see, doctrines. But it is known that man is energy. You are an energy now. Mm -hmm. And all energies are embedded within two primary aspects. One, positive energy. Two, negative energy. The positive energy generates or brings into manifestation love. The negative energy brings to manifestation hate. And this hate 
the negative energy also produces fear. The positive energy produces love and all manner of benevolence. So these things are embedded in you. And then, as this energy, as this is you, and this energy com com comes forth eh, in, in, in projections, eh, another law lies here, which comes down, which is the law of homogeneity, the law of attraction. So when, when the, the energies interact with this law, whatever that is prominent in the consciousness mm -hmm. becomes a determining factor. Mm -hmm. If what is prominent in the consciousness is fear, mm -hmm. eh, fear will, 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 will dominate the, 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 the And through the homogeneity now, because that's why I say that the individual has a, a dream that this is, this is, he becomes afraid. Eh? He does not even know in reality what the dream symbol is. The dream can be a different communication that is, that is sent to him. But he misinterprets it. And under the ambit of his misinterpretation, he, he fears the object that is utilized by him for the misinterpretation. He will attract that object. Mm -hmm. But the law of emotion goes with, with attraction. Whatever, what, whatsoever that is embedded in your emotion is what you attract to yourself. Mm -hmm. That is why we say, I have said it often, and some people tend to correct me, and insist, say, no, you don't, you don't make correction along that line. Because, because you attract what you love or what you hate. I say, a nation that loves, huh? a nation that hates war will not experience peace. You see, it's a paradox. It looks contradictory. A nation that hates war will not experience peace. But a nation that loves, war, uh, loves peace will experience peace. The problem lies in the emotion. Because emotion, a nation that hates war Will, will attract war. Because that war is what is paramount in the, in, the, in the collective emotion of that nation. So it will attract, because you must know that anything that is dominant in your consciousness, eh, within the graded intensity of your emotion, will, will come, must come into your experience. So when we say that, don't entertain fear, we are saying that the fear should never come part of, because, because some of those are things now are, are designed to put fear. You should come for deliverance and... Uh, or fast and pray. There's nothing wrong in fast and pray. But to say, if you don't know fast and pray, your children will die. The individual that said that it has spoken at a particular frequency, it is now left for the receiver to know how to handle it. If from that moment, eh, he, 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 fear, he lives in fear. Hmm? He can even be fasting and living in fear. He can even be fasting and still be living in fear over that thing. You'll be surprised that even upon the fasting you fast, why the fear is there? Is those, this, those, that fear will go and attract those spirits of death. Because the spirits of when you hear death, all those things are everything is hovering around them. As well, yeah, everything is over. Life is like death, everything is over. It depends on what you attract. We are the mist. Let me tell you, there, there was one day I realized something in my life. I've never experienced that. I say, if man knows himself as he is, he, he will find it difficult that he still considers himself as, as, one, as one person. <laughs> if, if you know eh, the barrage of consciousness eh, coming and going from, the, from your being it will, be diff it will become difficult for you to rec still recognize yourself as one singular being and you are moving around you can, you can cook, you can drive you can speak in the midst of this tumultuous this thing you see, barrage of consciousness because even the cell in your body has a consciousness, has a unit of consciousness. Mm -hmm. The cell. Whether or not science knows it, the atom has a, its own unit of consciousness. And then all these units form together to, 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 to coalesce into one central consciousness. And this one central consciousness eh, is not embedded in the overall consciousness of your being. But which, if a question is asked you, you say, what is your name? You will not say, let us say, you say, my name is uh, Alice, or uh, my name is Peter. Huh? How does that Peter come about? That, now, if, if, you, if, you, if you understand the conglomeration of the consciousness, each unit of consciousness that is nameless, joining together to pronounce that name, which is not even you, huh? you'll be so surprised that you can be moving around as a person. Man is a house. So many things are involved in that house. So it's an energy. That, when you hear fear, Hmm? You, you attract this, you, re, you repel this, you attract this, this, this one co come inside the house of dominion, this one is driven away, this one, that is man. So if you want love, 
love, love, love others, then love will come to you. If you want life, love life, and life will be your portion. If you fear death, eh? why pretend you to love life? <laughs> <laughs> you see? Your honor, sir, what of worry? Eh? Eh? Worry. 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 I was talking to somebody and I was I was advising on the area of worry, don't worry, everything will be alright. And he said, How can somebody not worry when there's many things to worry about? Yeah. Yeah, as you are talking, you are trying to enlighten that person. But he decides not to grow, you know. Because uh, in, in reality, let me tell you, in reality, in existence, there's nothing whatsoever to worry about. Nothing. Mm. Every worry in life is a mental creation. You see, that's why the masters have said that in your life, one of the things you should, first of all, find out is the worst that can happen in any situation. And make up your mind to face it. Because it takes a lot of time to be a man. What is the worst? Because that's your worry. Do you know that most of this worry, you worry yourself over certain things that may not even happen. Mm. So that the masterminds have admonished the eight men that look, in your life, the first thing you should do is have a sound mind. And if any situation asks, sincerely ask yourself. If any, I mean, if any situation arrives, eh? Sincerely sit down, not, not seeking anybody's advice, or you or your own. Ask yourself a sincere question. What is the worst that can happen in this situation? Then sincerely again analyze the situation and find out that, figure out that worst. Say, this is the worst that can happen. Then make up your mind not to worry about that worst. Is that clear? Make up your mind not to worry about that worst. And I, I, I tell you, all you can say is that, Lord, I hand it over to you. I'm sincere in, that, in the intensity of that speech. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. You will see that most times that thing you fear will never come. Amen. It will not come to pass. You see. So, but if somebody say, when there are many things to worry, what is he worried? That, there's no worry has no end in the material world. Mm -hmm. Somebody may be worried now that he doesn't have $500. If he has it now, he will solve this. That's worries. Give him that five hundred dollars. When that, when that is stabilized, he solves that one. Another worry will continue. He will need he will not need two thousand dollars, and it has no end. He may think that all these people that they are hearing their names that are the these and the richest people in the world or in Africa or whatever, the nations, that they have nothing to worry about. It's a lie. They may choose to worry, or they may choose not to worry. So, if for you to conquer the propensities of the eight life, you have. To know that there's nothing to worry about. Jesus Christ even taught it in the Holy Scriptures. He said, I say to you, don't take any thought of what to eat, what to drink, and what to do what? No, uh -huh. It's not what we worry. Every worry in this world is, is revolves around these things. Mm -hmm. Then he gave example to the children of men. He said, look at the base of the earth. They don't listen. He said, but the father feeds them. He was trying to tell that if God can feed such... Lesser creatures, how much more you put your trust in him? Yeah. But when we put our trust in the man, mm. say this man promised me that he's going to this, this, do this and this for me. Mm. And I, I, I have been calling him, he's not picking my call. That you see, uh, if your mind is debased, mm. then you, 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 unnecessary worry is created. This woman promised to marry me, or this man promised to marry me. And now it's not uh, even picking my call. Do you know whether that promise is promised to marry you and, and, and he's trying to escape? Is even the will of the Almighty God of creation trying to save you? Because all you, your the human mind, all he wants you to marry, nah, nah, no matter, let me marry. What of five years after that? You don't even know whether that is the person. What of that case we're having in Nigeria now? I think his, the name of that woman is Osinachi. Yeah. Yes. That woman that yes. the husband killed. Yes. Did you, the day they were married, did they kill themselves that day? Yes. Is it not, do you know how the whole thing started? Okay, does the, the, the woman know that this man I'm holding hand moving on the street is the one that will kill me? So there's something that knows more than man. And if you put your reliance on that dimension of reality, which is the power of Christ, which is the power of the Almighty God, whatever name you want to call the Almighty God, you know, but put your, put your consciousness that, that I, I, there's a source of all that is. Some people will call, can call him Jehovah, some people call him Krishna, some people call him Allah, some people call him uh, Narayana, some people call him uh, Vishnu, whatever. Hmm? But let me say I'm talking to those who call him Jehovah and believe in Jesus Christ as his manifestation. Put your trust there. Amen. 
You see that? And that trust is not, it's not something you put uh, uh, trust now and start wavering in your mind. You see now? <laughs> it's something it's, it's, it's unquestionable confidence, faith. And, and uh, you see, let me tell you, this faith and confidence is, is graded. It's not by, by your confessing it only. Uh, the intensity of the energy behind the faith, the faith you have in it, is known. It's, it's that they degrade it. If the heavens discover that degrading eh, of your faith in a particular thing, maybe your, in a particular expectation, your particular prayer has reached the peak, that is must be, it's a must. By law, it must be honored. Amen. But not if you say, let us say, you pray, you pray that you want to travel to a social service, or you want to go and say, Lord, I commit this into your hand, I pray. Your pastors come and reverence and bishop, they pray for you. Then in the night, when you sleep, it's, don't mean to say to yourself, uh, this thing, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> If you know, eh, if you go into what is called etheric, etheric intensities and see how that your small doubt will, will pull down the thing, pshaw, and the doubt, the intensity will also be graded. You can even pull it to the point. Wow. And when, they, when your, the men of God come to ask you tomorrow, say, I hope you still have faith in that. You say, yes, I believe. And it's a lie. And then, <laughs> so man must know that there are, such, there are things higher than him that are that great at all the this around him and that uh, he can make it. Huh? For as long as he has faith. Well, somebody will tell you, what is he get, getting worried about? What, uh, you say somebody is getting worried. Uh, what is he getting worried uh, when, when he mentioned that, let him find out. What, what is it? If you say he's afraid of death, why should he be afraid of death? Has you, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, everybody, all these people, even his own forefathers, and they, they are not. So if, if thousands and millions of people have been facing a particular experience, why should he be the singular person being afraid of it? He should, it's not worth it. And if you say that uh, he's, uh, he has no money, because most of those things are based on material things, he has no money. Eh? Uh, you remember that? Uh, remember the the former president of Nigeria, uh, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan. He made a statement, and uh, I, I, I deeply appreciate that statement. He said, "I don't. I will never look down on anybody, except I'm looking at his shoes. Mm. <laughs> I will not look down on anybody. Wow. You see." That is a mentality of self-satisfaction, mm -hmm. a, 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 a mentality of valuing uh, 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 these uh, humans. Now, also, uh, in addition, so one man is crying that he has no, uh, what do you call that? He has no uh, shoe to wear. What about the man that has no leg to wear shoe? Do you know that the man that is crying that he has no shoe to wear can go to hospital and see a man that has no leg to wear shoe? Eh? And the man will be saying, thank, I thank the Almighty God that even this my leg, is only, uh, I, I only lost one leg oh, in that heavy accident. Oh, I died. And the, the, that man is thanking God. Yeah. The other man has two legs. He cannot thank the Almighty. So this, this endless quest for this, is, that is what brings the, the, the trouble. So my age group, this my, 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 age, my, my, what do you call it? My age group or whatever, uh, classmate has built a big mansion. I don't have money to build. And because of that, your longer church in making sure that that is done, you don't value the one you have. So if anybody, that, if anybody tells you that he's troubled, ask him what is he troubled for. He say, I'm troubled for Susan Sutton. Ask him, that thing you are troubled, has it come now? Is it what you're experiencing now? Often it is not what they are experiencing, it's what they think that they will experience. Mm. So why not be happy now and be satisfied with yourself? Amen. Huh? You have, you, uh, you have a cup of rice to eat today. Yeah. But you don't think you have a cup of rice to, you, that you have, for tomorrow you don't have. I say, eat that cup of rice today in peace and in joy mm -hmm. and wait for tomorrow. Yeah. But often, the sons and daughters of men in the material world, eh, the disturbance in their minds of, the, of that tomorrow have you something to eat tomorrow? We made them not enjoy that cup of rice today. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should have to come back to continue. This, uh, this. Father, we thank you for this episode. We pray that your spirit will use it to guide us on the path of light Amen. and the path of divine enlightenment. Amen. As we come back to continue, we pray your spirit to continue with us. Amen. The mighty name of the eternal. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.